Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here for the Corn School. Today I am down in Rodney, Ontario, catching up with the OMAFRA plant pathologist, Albert Tuna. Albert, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It is early October here, and I wanted to catch up to you and talk tar spot, a disease that you and I have talked about a, a lot over the last three years. We're down here in one of your nurseries yeah. in Rodney, Ontario. I want to talk about, uh, you know, what you've seen this year, and maybe some of the new tools we've got coming in the future. But first of all, let's talk about this season. Um, you know, you've been watching this disease for a couple of years now. How does this year compare? I mean, like, it was dry early, then it got wet. I thought that would bring trouble for tar spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Burn, like you mentioned, this has been in place since 2021 when we first saw tar spot in Ontario. And every year has been different. And 2023 is no different. Is again a different year than the other two years. And what we've seen is those conditions that favor tar spot came in maybe a little later than what we've seen in 2021 and 2022. So this year it established around the same time, mid July. Didn't really start to peak in that in this area and along the north shore of of Lake Erie until maybe that mid-August time frame and then really started to shoot up at the end of August into September to where we are right now. Hey, we're in shorts right now at, at this at Thanksgiving basically and that's really helped tar spot for sure. Based on what you're seeing here, how would you assess the overall potential impact of tar spot here in 2023? Yeah, it depends again where you're at. So, you know, in this field, in this area, along that North Shore, um, we're gonna see an impact and, and it depends on field by field, hybrid by hybrid and and the local conditions as well. So here we're gonna see, you know, in general, I'm gonna probably see a, a 10 to 30 bushel yield impact. In 2021, we saw on general a 30 to 60 bushel. In 2022, that was probably down again to that 10 to 30 bushel range. So we will see an impact, you know, we, I. Nobody predicts yields except for Johnson before the combine comes through, and I'm not going to do that right now. But we will see differences, and we are definitely seeing differences in our fungicide applications, different products, different timings, different genetics as well. Albert, let's talk about some of those management tools. You've done a lot of work on fungicides in the last few years, different timings especially. Let's talk about that plot beside you. That's uh, with a fungicide applied V10. What do we know about that application? Yeah, that's been the big question this year is when to apply these fungicides, right? And so those pre-tassel applications provide a benefit. In many cases, the corn shorter, growers are able to get in, they're able to manage it and get to the fields uh, using their own equipment and all that kind of stuff. But the question is, do we get the same level of control? And this is a good year. We're going to see those differences and hopefully come to a, a better understanding of the timing and management of tar spot. Visually, we don't see a lot of difference between our control and these V10 to V12 leaf um, applications this year. But again, we haven't harvested them and we'll see what happens. Tell me about, um, I mean, your standard recommendations. It's always been that R1 VT. Um, yeah. How does that look this year? And hey, is that still what you'd call the standard? Yeah, so I, it's really hard to pull off. We're also doing our Dawn survey this week as well and Gibberella ear rot Dawn survey. So the risk for us in Ontario with that Jib, Dawn, that VT R1 for control of that, falls in quite nicely in our tar spot management. And that's been consistent even with our U.S. colleagues as well in Michigan, Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, etc. So that has been the most consistent. And looking at what we're looking at this year again, it seems to be the most consistent again, that VTR1. So now we've got the tools, we've got the fungicides. I think we you know the timing is there. The other question is, should we have a second app? And that, and so we we've got those in in play this year as well, and we're looking at those. Now those um, uh, timings, you know, more the R three, the later timing. You know, what's the strategy of coming that late? A lot of growers, you know, may, may want to pull the trigger late, Albert. Yeah, and and we've seen that this year actually, where a number of growers that didn't do the VTR one because the conditions maybe weren't as favorable, couldn't get it in on time, and we've got our cat friend here today as well, and uh, and that came in with a later application, even past R three in that, and again. We do probably, and we do see some control or some efficacy there. Will it pay for itself at that point? And so again, the strategy going in late, um, especially if you're looking at a double application on, on those, you know, we've also got trials where we're looking at 
maybe coming in with those premium products, you know, those, those products that we see the consistent response at the VTR1, and maybe then come back in with a, a lower cost uh, option there, say a generic or something. So we're looking at all those options. But again, it comes down to return on investment. Do you get your bang for your money with those later applications as opposed to that consistent VTR1 app? Now, Albert, you're always testing new products. You got a new fungicide here, something new for this year. You got some potential here. Yeah, cool. So this again, that VTR1 application, one time in, in this particular case, July 27th. And you can see compared to this is an untreated check, same hybrid, uh, night and day. And that's one of the fun things, Burn, we love to do. So working with our crop protection network colleagues in the US, crop protection companies, all that, we get to test some of this new stuff that's you know maybe two, three, four, five years down the pipeline. But this is exciting. Look at this. This is, you know, we're into first week of August, we're into Thanksgiving, October, and this is still green compared to everything else. So there is some really good potential here. Again, working it getting the results, and how do we get this from this experimental uh, stage to your hands in the field? Albert, last thing I want to talk about is genetics. Uh, let's talk about your trials here. You must be testing oh, more, uh, more than 100 hybrids, right? Yeah, so this year we got 105 different hybrids from various different companies, and we're evaluating those for, for tolerance and working with the, the seed companies. It's a nice supplemental data set for their regular screening and ratings they do across the province. And the goal there is to evaluate those hybrids and see, hey, where we're at. And you know, all the companies have some that are, are show some tolerance and some that are very susceptible. And the goal there is for them to, to have those ratings out there. And you're seeing them in the seed guides right now from any of the companies. Now let's take a look at what you're standing next to here. I mean, you do a lot of experimental research as well, looking at different lines. Uh, this is looking pretty green, pretty impressive. What do we got? Yeah, so this is, um, a really cool line that we got. This is in collaboration with Ida Kibeti out of Ag Canada in Ottawa, the new corn breeder there. And she was able to get this line and others from uh, Semit in Mexico where Tarspot has originated, has been around for, for a long time. And so taking these lines and the genetics here, the resistance and incorporated into some of her lines that are available for Ontario or germplasm that would be applicable to Ontario that could either develop into hybrids or provide germplasm to other providers, the seed companies as well. So the goal here is to take what could be potential resistance or tolerance and get that into Ontario hybrids quicker, get that process going quicker. Now, when I say quicker, we're still looking at like a five to seven year process. Right. Hey, Albert, hey, some great insights, some great work. Uh, always appreciate the invite to the Terra Spot Nursery on Corn School. Yeah, thank you so much. And again, acknowledge, I talk, Grain Farmers of Ontario, SCAP, our Crop Protection Network, you and others as well. Thank you so much.